Welcome into Schadenfreude Saturday, where uh, Florida State loses, but so does Jimbo and so does Dabo. So yeah. we got something Not going for us. Not all is lost, right? <laughs> Not Miami, all is lost. Miami played Central Connecticut State or something, right. so it uh, wasn't a great Maybe day Florida for the rivals. Florida State could beat them. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Florida State does fall to 0-4, uh, and somehow it doesn't feel that bad after you're down 31-7. I guess that's what you do. Yeah. You get down 31-7. to Smart. 38-20. to and you then, get these <laughs> down big and then show a little fight, and people are like, all right, okay. Um, but that's what happened. Florida State could not have played worse probably in the first 28 minutes of the first half. They got the ball with about two, two and a half minutes to go in the first half, went right down the field and scored five plays, 75 yards. Really, I think that matched their offensive output yeah. of the, the first you know 28 minutes. And then um, second half really just dominated Louisville. Uh, held them to, I think, 70-something yards of offense. Florida State put up like 270 yards of offense, uh, outscored them 16 to nothing in the sec- second half, but still come up short, 31-23. to And uh, Florida State is 0-4 now for the first time since 1974, which is pretty repugnant. Yes. Uh, but at least the second half did happen. It did, yeah, yeah. You said it all, Ira. You said it all. Like there, the the thing when I was writing my column that I just got done writing, you can read on Warchan if you're a subscriber. Um, is is that like, you just know? Okay, this is a bad football team. Clearly, they're zero and four. They might finish two and ten, one and eleven. Literally, those are those are things that can happen. Uh, but you can't when you're not good and you're not overly talented. And let's be honest, not not all that well coached not exquisitely it would seem. coached um you you can't do things like have punts land over your head and roll down to the four or push guys out of bounds whether you think it was a personal foul or not why are you even doing it why are you risking it you're wearing a florida state uniform they're they're itching to call that on you have you not paid attention brendan Gant? these guys love nothing more <laughs> than throwing a flag on an fsu db for pushing a guy out of bounds so don't even give him an op- a chance to cunningham was not going to cut it back that, you know what I mean? He yeah. had given up on the play. There's no reason to touch him at all. So those things like that, you know, not, not catching a screen pass that's a walk-in touchdown. Great play, great read, finish the play. Talking about a defensive end. Yeah, Thomas. it's a great read. Yeah, he, Make he, the play. Yeah. He handed it to you. Uh, uh, Jordan Wilson dropping another big pass on a third down. Corbin, who had a really nice game, dropping a fourth down pass. That's going to go for a big game. These are all the things that losing football teams do. And that's the thing. is like Florida State, I think, is evenly matched with Louisville. You, yeah. know, what, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe a little bit more talent. I don't know, but they're evenly matched. But they play situations so poorly, and they have now for three weeks in a row. I don't know there's another team in the country that has outgained three of their four opponents in his 0-4. I mean, that's hard to do, but that's what happens when you don't play situationally good football and they're terrible on third down. The thing in the first half with the defense was, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, but, yeah, in the in the offense, the whole game, just on third down, situationally, they're really, really bad. But there were, yeah, there are some positives. It is crazy how the offense does put up yardage. Yeah, uh, again, this- 20 to 20, man, or 30 to 30, they're, they're, they're nails. They're and- great. <laughs> but uh, I think tonight, Third and fourth down combined, it was like 5 of 21, something like that. Yeah. At least that's what it was late in the game. Uh, going back over these last three games, I mean, it's been like that's been the story all three games. The one difference offensively in this game was the Jacksonville State game was all the penalties. Right. They sabotaged so many drives. Last week it was all the turnovers. This week they really didn't have many. The, the, as a team, FSU had four penalties, uh, including the one you talked about on the sideline. And one uh, at the end of the game, which was the game was right. over. Right, it was a yeah, legal substitution. Illegal substitution. Or yeah. And then um, – you know, you only had uh, the one turnover, which was at the end of the game. Basically, ended up being a hail mary. Probably not. It's not a hail mary. It's a it's a guy not making a not play. making a play. Yeah, yeah. you had Andrew Parchman actually showed up and played, caught five passes, including a touchdown. The pass that Mackenzie Milton throws to him uh, to get that touchdown late in the first half was just outstanding. A thing of beauty. Maybe I mean, the really. highlight of the season so far. Yeah, I, I don't know. If Parch- I don't know. If Parchman had a choice, but to catch yeah, no, he I put mean, it, it was, on him. That's a great throw. Um, but, you know, ultimately, and Jay Sean Corbin had another big game, had 160, 159 yards rushing on like 11 carries. Treshawn Ward ran the ball pretty well. But what, what this game also tells you again, and we've seen it now the last couple of games, is this offensive staff doesn't have any confidence in this team executing in short yardage or yeah. third and fourth down situations because everything is some sort of a gimmick, whether it's um, – trying to snap the ball when the defense isn't ready and apparently your tight end isn't ready. Mm, uh, yeah. Or uh, last week running Mackenzie Milton on fourth and two or running outside. I mean, they just they don't have confidence that they can block anything up, which puts you in a tough spot, especially when you're playing with a quarterback that's clearly still ru- shaking off some of the rust. Because Mackenzie Milton 
played better in the second half, but he still did not play very good. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I don't think Milton played poorly necessarily, but, man, quarterbacks, you make your money, you make your mark on third down and in the red zone. That's where the windows are tighter, when the pressure is higher, and he's been horrible at both all season long. Um, I don't even know how many times they got in the red zone this game, not but they, they, got in a, they were in Louisville territory the whole game. It would always, the first down would always be a sack or a, law, a, a tackle for loss for two yards, and this offense isn't good enough to overcome second and 12 third and 11, third and 15. It can't do it. So, yeah, no, he wasn't very good. You just you haven't gotten great quarterback play. Um, you also, it's hard to get great quarterback play when there are some plays where it's just, it's like the offensive linemen don't know they're supposed to try to keep them from, they're trying to slow the defensive linemen down. But then the offensive line paves away for your two running backs to have over 200 yards on 21 carries. They average almost 10 yards per carry. So it's not all, the, it's not like the offensive line is a train wreck. It's just, again, you they're, they're not good when it matters most, and that's what bad football teams do. They find ways to lose. I feel like Florida State found a way to lose this, lose this game. But, but look, let's let, look, I thought the second half was the best half of Florida State football defense has played since Pruitt was the defensive coordinator. I mean, I don't know that they've ever had a, since then that a team has gone eight straight possessions without scoring, not even getting close. They had a, they lost on, they had a turnover on downs and seven punts. Yeah. It was an incredible stretch there. But by God, what was the first five drives? What happens? I don't, I don't under, I, I guess we're not smart enough to understand how a defense can look that poorly prepared. Well, it wasn't but just. But it's two weeks in a row that they have just been obliterated in the first half. Yeah, on the one hand, those mistakes in the first half, some of it was guys just not making plays, letting receivers on a third and eight run a nine or ten yard route yeah. and catch the first yeah. down right in front of you, then making the tackle. But some of it also was just complete mis- miscommunication. I think on the first long touchdown pass, um, that was the safety. Sounds fault, like the safety was. Like. Is, you know, Miko Dotson expected the safety to come over the top and help. That didn't happen. There were a lot of plays and where Norvell confirmed that, right? Yes, that after it was, the game. he was supposed to have deep safety help. So. And then after the or d- during the course of the first half, there was a lot of times where you'd see defensive backs motioning to other players, not really sure where to yes. be lined up. Uh, the play where Jarvis Brownlee is trying to cover three guys by himself, right. trying to get everybody else's attention, hopping Nobody's up like, and down like the <laughs> the ground is lava. <laughs> and. Uh, so there was too much of that, again, yes. four games into a season to have that many mistakes. I don't know if they simplified things in the second half to make it easier for them to at least get lined up correctly, but something happened. Um, big picture-wise, though, I do, you know, again, man, it's hard to give this coaching staff a whole lot of credit when you're 0-4, but I am surprised they didn't lose a team when it was 31-7. to I mean, you're 0-3 yeah. and you're down 31-7. to Man, it could go really sideways really quickly. I thought there was a chance. Oh, our guy showed up with this music. I, I was wondering if he knew we were recording. I'm glad he made it uh, in the parking lot. I was I was literally, you saw me. I started writing a column basically saying, I don't know how Adam Fuller comes back from. Like, how is he even the coordinator tomorrow? How is he the coordinator on Monday? Not even Syracuse. Like, you can't, you can't look this bad and then just keep rolling them out there. That was the second week in a row they've given up over 300 yards in the first half. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. But... Again, for the second week in a row, I think Wake Forest was more Wake Forest inflicted. Like, they just decided maybe not to, to go as fast. But Louisville was trying. They were taking shots. They knew the game was kind of – they were losing the grasp on it. And the Florida State defense just kept playing well and well. I mean, that was – it was good to see. And, look, man, we – don't don't get this twisted. I've been coming to games in this stadium since most of you were – not even a twinkle in your dad's eye. Um, And Ira's been coming to this. You've been covering this team for 20 years. We ain't happy with this. This is not fun for any of us to cover a program like this. I was was contemplating a career change at that time. I mean, we all were. I was like, man, selling real estate can't be this hard, man. That sounds more fun than this. But like, so don't, uh, we, we haven't lowered our standards to like, oh, Florida State fans should be happy with, with 0 and 4. But it is what it is. This team isn't good at all. It might be the worst team in the conference. It's one of the worst teams in all of Power Five, if not the worst. So you have to, you have to look at it with a different view, right? With a different eye, with different vision. Like, yeah, they tried hard. They played really hard. They didn't quit. Well, there's a positive. We can, we can, we can celebrate a positive while also acknowledging this is this is awful. Mike, Mike Norvell did say that uh, it was kind of interesting. He brought this up on his own in the post game press conference. Oh, he yeah, said about that the all in, right? He said that uh, more guys are all in now, and he said I've never coached a team where everybody was all in, but more guys are all in, which you know, you can figure it out on your own that you know many guys were not all in before, but he feels like more guys are all in, more guys are are doing or 
sacrificing the way that they need to, to for this team to have a chance. Uh, the players afterwards, I thought, you know, I'd encourage people to watch the interviews. Jermaine Johnson, Mackenzie Milton, Jarvis Brownlee, Brownlee all those too. guys. Corbin, Corbin didn't want, didn't feel like Corbin wanted to be there much. Still watching though, nice kid, good kid, but he, you know, he didn't really have much to say. I don't think about yeah. feeling feeling state, great about state of the program. feeling great about almost winning. Um, but you know, so we'll see. Well, it keeps us going for another week. It keeps yeah. it keeps us going the for another flowing. week. The blood's flowing. The blood's flowing. Yeah, we'll see, absolutely. We'll see what happens next week against Syracuse. But uh, I think we've uh, covered it all. From Doe Campbell Stadium, where Florida oh, we're Florida State. Done? I, like, you can keep going, buddy. You can keep going. Anything else you want to bring up? Uh, no. I mean, I, I was going to say, though, like, what, what, what is the ceiling for this team? You mean in terms of wins and losses? Or is it three? Or quality of play? Three? It, three might have left the building today, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was one of the – I mean, that's yeah. the thing. That we Going into the season, one comment just to address – some of the haters, okay. get some haters out there we that see are you. saying we that, we so, that we sold this team as all this great improvement. We were all saying six and six, five and seven, seven and five. That was going to be where this team could be. Well, these last two games, these last three games, you thought you'd win two of them. You yeah. thought you'd beat Jacksonville State, and you thought you'd win maybe either at Wake Forest or at home against Louisville. You didn't get either of those. So now you're zero and four in. Some of those wins you thought you were going to have are not coming. So I guess what we I were never say, thinking they were going to be an eight or nine or but ten. But also, and I know you don't want to hear this because losses are losses. But remember the Louisville game last year. Oh, yeah. That was a. I mean, they also had two two Atwell that helped. But um, I do think this right. team is better than last year's team. Right. Oh, but the record At this is point, all. That, but the record is all that matters, and I get it. I understand that. But it could be a five and seven team that finishes two and ten. I know we were all Jim right. Morris, the record, or whoever that was, Herm yeah. Edwards. I can't remember who said it. The rec- you are what your record says you are. But they, they have made some strides, not nearly enough. Again, we've been coming to this place forever. I'm not happy with this. But they have made some strides that maybe you can take some solace in the fact that even when they go 2-10 <laughs> and ten, <laughs> or 1-11. Well, and, and that's all I'm saying is the, the opportunities to prove it. Like last year's team – they, they had an easier schedule because they didn't play Clemson or Florida, and they only played nine games. Man, won't it be great to play uh, Clemson? You finally face an offense that can't score. Be the worst <laughs> well, offense you face all year. We'll see how that goes. But uh, anyway, the opportunities to prove that you're better are kind of dwindling because the second half of this schedule is when you play your toughest games for the most part. So that's going to be the problem. They could be playing a lot better in October and November than they did in September, but they squandered some really good chances to get wins. Yeah, well, they, again, like I've said, they've, they've outgained three of these four opponents. And it's not fluky. It's not like, in my opinion, it's not. It's not like they got a bunch of uh, garbage yards when the, when the game was over. All these games that they lost were games that were in the fourth quarter. It's a one-possession game in all three of them. And so, I mean, there's no, – there you he made it. There, you don't have to brag about uh, – I mean, good grief, I hope he won – uh, you don't have to brag about outgaining Jacksonville State, but in three of your four losses, you did outgain the other team. You weren't embarrassed, blown off the field. You can't find ways to win right now. You can't find ways to win. They need. This is a team and a program that, good grief, just needs something good to happen to it. But it probably won't because why would why would anything change? Stay tuned to Warchant. <laughs> That's a great finish. There's plenty more coverage coming at Warchant.com. And uh, we'll see you next week when Florida State takes on Gets Syracuse. Gets that dub. Gets that dub over the Orange.